Right, I recorded this whole video with the wrong microphone, which sounded like I was in a tunnel, so hopefully this one actually works. Who knows? Um, energy changes. So, trying to make this real, real simple. Energy changes come in two flavours. We've either got when reactions occur, this is, and that could be chemical or it could be physical. We either have energy losses. So, energy is either lost when the reaction occurs, or we find that energy is gained when the reaction occurs. Two possibilities. We lose energy or we gain energy as the reaction is occurring. Now, in either of these cases, when the energy is lost or the energy is gained, the energy is not destroyed or is created. The energy of the universe remains constant at all times. There is no ability to create or destroy energy. It's a famous sort of, you know, quote, you know, you cannot create or destroy energy. That's pretty much what I just said. Um, but that's very, very important. What we find is we get transfers of energy. Energy goes from one place to another. And so in terms of chemistry, these losses or gains of energy fall into two categories of types of reaction. When an energy loss occurs within a reaction, we call it an exothermic reaction. And when energy is gained during a reaction, we call that an endothermic reaction. Now, the term exothermic, what that means is that actually energy is being given out, energy is being lost. The reaction loses energy, it gives out energy to the surroundings, and that's very important. It's to the surroundings where the energy is being lost from. And on the contrary, when energy is gained in an endothermic reaction, it comes from the surroundings. So the surroundings are ultimately, and really surroundings is anything that isn't the molecules of reactants themselves or atoms of reactants themselves. It's essentially the universe. So the energy is being lost to the universe. The surroundings is what though we probably feel that as directly next to the reaction or from the surroundings, from the universe in that uh, instance. So exothermic reactions lose energy. Energy is lost to the surroundings. And as a result, we normally see a temperature increase as a result. The surroundings get more energetic, therefore, in terms of heat energy, certainly here, exothermic heat energy being lost, the outside, the surroundings become warmer. Good examples of these are combustion reactions where we utilize this fantastic phenomenon of energy uh, increasing in terms of the surroundings and so therefore getting warmer. We heat our homes using that or we cook our food using that or we run our cars. All of those combustion reactions are very, very important examples of exothermic reactions. Just to come back to this term exothermic, exo, think exiting a building, energy being lost, it is leaving the reaction. On the contrary, endothermic energy is being taken in, en, endo, endothermic. General terms, we may see a temperature decrease, but may is possibility. We may see it decreasing. The reason being that sometimes, and a particular category of thermal decomposition reactions are ones where we have to provide energy in the form of a Bunsen. So, an example. In here, I've got a metal carbonate in there. And I want this to undergo its endothermic reaction of thermal decomposition, i.e. it uses energy to break down. The problem is, this reaction, there is not enough energy in the room, in the normal surroundings, to allow for it to actually pull in enough. Therefore, what we do is we heat it using a Bunsen burner. This is if you're doing this in the lab, something like calcium carbonate is a good example. We heat that super, super, super hot. It's given to a, you know, a few hundred degrees and it will then start to decompose. Now, people get confused with this because exothermic reactions, you see a temperature increase. Well, on the surface of this, you would see it getting very hot. Therefore, people think, ah, exothermic. Well, no, it's not. The reaction between the gas and the oxygen within the Bunsen burner, within the flame there, that is an exothermic reaction, and that's why we see an increase in temperature, energy being released. That energy that's being released is being pumped into our metal carbonate, for example, our thing that is being thermally decomposed, and it is using that energy to break itself down, to decompose, carry out a chemical reaction to become something new. In the case of a metal carbonate, become a metal oxide, 
and carbon dioxide. The reason we see it getting so hot is not because of the reaction that's taking place here, but because of the reaction that's taking place in the Bunsen. And all that's happening is whilst a lot of that energy is going into the substance being broken down, a lot of it actually is going into the beaker or the crucible that's being heated and it's going into the tripod that's being used. It's going into the air, the classroom, whatever it be. So actually only some of that energy is going in to break this substance down. The rest of it is just going in, it's basically being wasted. So we see that as an increase. So it's a confusing one, uh, but an important example of endothermic reactions all the same. Now, what we do also need to be able to do is draw things called reaction profiles, and these show us what's happening in terms of energy in those reactions. But to do so, we need a couple of sets of axes. But uh, there they are, two sets of axes. This one here I'm going to use to draw an exothermic, what we call a reaction profile, or in old money, we would call it an energy level diagram, but things have changed, times are moving on. So these are reaction profiles. So we've got an exothermic, and over here, I'll draw my endothermic reaction profile. Now they all have, both of these, all, of, all two of them, have very similar appearances in terms of what they contain, but they are the opposite of one another, as you would expect, one taking in energy, the other losing energy. So what we draw exothermic reaction, our reactants are something that we need to label on here. Our reactants start nice and high, and what we find is as the reaction progresses, as time progresses down here on our x-axis, what we find is energy is lost to the surroundings, and so eventually our products end up down here at a lower energy than our reactants were at. And we say the difference between these two, well, this is the energy that is released to the surroundings, of course, and this is why it gets hot, because energy has been released, difference between the reactants and the products. And this is very generic, there's no numbers involved here. The course of the reaction, though, doesn't just go from here to here, it has a little bit of a hump, and then it goes down. Now, the reason for that is whilst the energy released is the difference between the products, uh, the reactants and the products, we also have to account for the fact that initially we have to put in a little burst of energy. And that little burst of energy that we have to put in to start with is classed as the activation energy. Think back to your lovely rates of reactions. It's that energy that has to be there. It's the minimum energy required for the reaction to take place or whatever you want to say. So we have to give it a little kickstart of energy in terms of lighting a match, for example, which is the burning of a match, I should say, the exothermic reaction. We have to strike the match. We have to give it a little bit of a burst. There you go. Think of it as a ball on a hill. The ball on the hill has to be pushed up to this top part here. You put energy in before it then goes down under its own steam. Reaction profile, exothermic reaction, energy being lost. The confusing part here um, is sometimes that people think because exothermic reactions get hotter, you would imagine energy to go up. Well, of the surroundings, that is true. But this is a reaction profile that shows the reactant molecules, atoms, and the product molecules and atoms. And of course, energy is lost between those. Because remember, energy is conserved. The energy that goes to the surroundings has to come from somewhere, and it comes from the reactants as they become products. The complete opposite is true for our lovely endothermic one reaction profile. Less likely to see this in an exam. They tend to, if they're going to ask you to draw one of these, tends to be for an exothermic reaction because these are a bit wonky looking. So here we go, endothermic reaction. Bada. Same principle as before. And I'm just these dots are just me extending these lines by the way. This is our energy taken in or energy absorbed, however you want to or energy gain, doesn't really matter how you say it. Energy taken in is the difference between the reactants and products. Always the energy change is just the difference between the reactants and the products. However, we now have this big old activation energy here, which is that difference again between the reactants and the top of the curve. Endothermic reaction, our ball, we have to push it up the entire way up to the top, and then it rolls down on its own steam at the very end. So there's more energy has to be put in initially for an endothermic reaction to take place. Learn these, they're very important. They also show what you are actually seeing in terms of energy changes between the reactants and the products, and they go to help explain that concept a little bit more. As I said, energy being lost between reactants and the products, this reaction goes on to the surroundings, and the complete opposite there within an endothermic reaction. So to recap, if, an, if energy is lost in, an, uh, in a reaction, in a chemical or physical reaction, 
we say that it is an exothermic reaction. That energy has come from the reactants as they became products and it has lost to the surroundings. Often we see a temperature increase. Combustion is a very good example of this. Energy, however, if it is gained in a reaction, that energy comes from the surroundings and that's called an endothermic reaction. Possibly we'll see a temperature decrease, but in the case of a thermal decomposition, we probably wouldn't notice that because of how much energy we're having to supply via something like a Bunsen. Reaction profiles look a little bit like this and they show and they highlight the concept that I've just been talking about there and they are very important so make sure you learn them. And there you have it, exothermic and endothermic reactions, energy changes in reactions.